we are born into the world of opposites dark light hot cold summer winter right brain left brain yin yang masculine feminine life is made up of these opposites and that finding a balance between them is a key to a healthy physical and mental state we think of masculine and feminine as polar opposites but the truth is there are two complementary parts of the same whole all people have masculine and feminine energy which has nothing to do with biology or sexuality or gender there are positive bright or mature expressions of both masculine and feminine energy as well as immature dark or toxic expressions these two forces of nature are portrayed in chinese philosophy as yin and yang and in hindu mythology as shiva and shakti archetypes representing the divine masculine and feminine that are a part of everything in life including all of us shiva is absolute reality of consciousness and is known as a lord of yoga he represents the highest most inspiring and truest expression of masculinity shakti represents the eminent aspect of the divine force participating actively in the act of creation it's true that shakti takes the active role and takes a charge to actively participate in the act to procreate while shiva is mostly depicted to lie immobile however according to the metaphysical knowledge both male and female divine parts are involved in the divine union shakti merely initiates actively whilst in a society today females are considered to be the weaker sex it is to be understood that if there was only masculine energy that existed there'll be everything but nothing at the same time because both shiva and shakti are everything and nothing in their own way if shiva is nothingness the shunya shakti in bars it as the beginning and in this video we will dig deep and get to know more about the qualities of shiva energy as well as shakti energy and we will also look into the nature of these divine energies combined because accessing each of our divine natures both masculine and feminine can be both enlightening and surprising however we need to remember that we carry within us both aspects of the divine so watch this video to figure out how each of these energies is at play in our lives and how we constantly seek a delicate and peaceful balance between them so that we can have better relationships magnetically attract what we want set our goals and complete them and lead a fulfilling life so stay tuned till the end according to sevjan one of the major branches of yogic philosophy there is a divine masculine energy that takes the form of hindu god shiva and a divine feminine energy that takes the form of the goddess shakti both shiva and shakti are alive in both men and women all of us have divine masculine shiva aspects and divine feminine shakti aspects to our being it is said that our feminine side resides on our left side while the masculine resides on our right side we hold these energies within us and when united there is a complete balance joy and presence within our very being so let's get to know more about the qualities of shiva energy as well as shakti energy and we will also see how the nature of these energies combined make a difference and later we will also see how shiva and shakti are part of the same whole pair shiva and shakti are like the twin planes or twin souls the mirror image of each other and how over many lifetimes each female and male counterpart has been trying to bring her or his original feminine and masculine energies into balance as a prelude to lasting twin reunion so make sure to stick around and enlighten yourself with this ancient wisdom so that you can learn how to how to alchemize this polarity into uni- unity like these twin souls who are ascended masters in advanced selves the nature of shiva energy 
Shiva is another name for the absolute reality or absolute consciousness that makes up our cosmos. Shiva is a transcendent aspect of cosmic consciousness or the source of everything and all that is. Shiva in all his steadfast union become the internal world and the external world is often known as the lord of yoga. The power of Shiva's consciousness can bring great inner strength and spaciousness. Now in the tradition of Shaivism, Shiva is forever in union with Shakti, his divine divinely feminine consort. The nature of Shiva energy is steadfast, stable, peaceful, strong and totally unmoved with complete presence. Shiva represents the state of being unmoved by pain or suffering brought on by the external world. He is centered, he is grounded and is compassionate. We can invoke his pure presence through meditation to call in the extraordinary qualities of Shiva into our own being. Direction, purpose, freedom and awareness, these are our divinely masculine qualities. The masculine energy of Shiva is of aware of everything that comes into creation. All the things of creation are birthed through the feminine aspect of Shakti, and all of us have these qualities within us as well. They are a dance, movement, power, energy and the freedom to become. That's our Shakti. Shiva is pure being in its stillness and Shakti is pure becoming in all her flow and creativity as well as an endless opening to possibility. Your inner masculine side knows who it is and is purposeful in his knowing. There is a deep wisdom and capacity for awareness within Shiva. The nature of Shakti energy, the Shakti is exquisitely beautiful with the flowing and shape shifting quality to her. Embracing reality as a dance, she's a dancer, she's fluid, flowing and powerfully flexible. Shakti energy can be wildly sensual, raw and expressive. Shakti energy can be seen in everything that lives as a manifest, while Shiva energy is formless. Things that have already come into being are made of Shakti energy, and these two divinely sacred energies are equal and opposite forces. We can't have one without the other. We can integrate Shiva and Shakti within our own inner consciousness, with our entire being, these sacred bars can open us up and transform our very being. The Shakti energy within us can take the form of prana, pra- that life force energy that flows through our naris or subtle energy channels. It can also take the form of kundalini energy, that coiled energy that lies dormant at the base of the spine unless and until it is unleashed. And when this happens, a kundalini awakening occurs in which the Shakti energy awakens and moves through the central channel of the Sushumana Nari along with the seven chakras inside. This is when deep cleansing, healing and transformation takes place and it all happens through the movement of Shakti energy within. We can feel our Shiva energy when we are the witness of the Shakti. When we sit in meditation, cultivating clear presence and purpose, we are resting within our own, within our inner Shiva nature. So Shiva holds space for Shakti to move through. Shiva gives direction to Shakti's shape, shifting, energetic flow. And in union, Shiva Shakti make up the half woman, half woman lord known as Ardhanarishwara. And this the Shiva Shakti in consort is a truly beautiful one to gaze upon. This androgynous figure shows the union of masculine and feminine aspects of our being, which brings about a mystical wholeness within. Shiva is the yogi god with his muscle legs and dreadlocks and a snake around his neck. He carries a trident and has a peaceful, has a peaceful face. And Shakti has long hair, large almond-shaped eyes and delicate features. She wears a flowing silk cloth and one of her feet is raised in a dance. This is Shiva Shakti, the union of sacred masculine and feminine consciousness that lies within us and throughout the cosmos, throughout the cosmos. Shiva and Shakti are a same whole 
where Shiva and Shakti are like the twin flames or twin souls, the mirror image of each other. They complete each other. Thus, they are an indestructible force that unites together to create the entire cosmos. Eastern mystical teachings tells us that the male-female principle of polarity was and still is the driving force of creation that ordered and arranged a physical universe and all that it contains, including you. On a much smaller scale, these two polarities of energy are an integral part of our soul and our nature. When a twin soul was created, one half was assigned a masculine root gender and the other was feminine. When that happened, the female twin half retained a vestige of her twin's masculine energy and the opposite occurred for her other half. Chances are that somewhere in your travels across the internet, you have stumbled upon the term twin flame. It is also likely that you foo-foo the concept thinking, thinking twin flames are synonymous with soulmates. And you have heard it all before. A twin flame is your own soul, shared across what appears to be two physical beings. It is one soul split into two bodies. When a soul is created, it is built into two parts, mirrors of each other, constantly yearning to reconnect. Since the twin flame is actually your soul shared across two physical forms, it differs from other relationships because it's a type of connection and journey that cannot be shared with anyone else on earth. You only have one twin flame. So prior to the fall of humanity on planet earth, our natural spirit form was an androgynous being of light. Our one whole etheric body contained a feminine yin and masculine yang consciousness. Its one mind can be likened to a magnet with two distinct poles of energy and influence. We came to earth millions of years ago in spirit form to experience what and and feel what it was like to exist at the three-dimensional level and to bring a sense of godliness to this plane of existence. We then lost our way as we became more and more attached to the physical pleasures earth life had to offer. Eventually, we lost our God-centeredness and became ego-driven or self-centered. At some point, our androgynous spirit body separated into two halves as physical man and physical woman. At that point, early man was all yang energy with a seed of the feminine inside him. The opposite was true for early woman. In order to help us remember who we really are, the reincarnational cycle and the law of karma that goes with it pulled us into its grip. We have been on that wheel of life, death, life for ages trying to recall our divine origin so that we can reclaim our God-centeredness and reunite with our twin soul as we were proud to the fall. Over many lifetimes, each female and male counterpart has been trying to bring her or his original feminine and masculine energies into balance as a prelude to lasting twin reunion. From time to time, this includes having a lifetime in a sexual form that is the opposite of one's root gender. For example, a man experiencing what it is like to be a woman, to better understand and nurture his opposite feminine energy, and vice versa for a woman. This doesn't mean that man has to be half masculine and half feminine. Rather, it means he needs to fully develop his masculine, his Shiva characteristics, while at the same time, allowing his Shakti, feminine side to grow and mature into its proper proportion as well. And the opposite holds true for a woman. It stands to reason that there will be instances during a given lifetime when a might, man might over-identify with his feminine side and less so with his masculine energy, while the opposite might be true with a woman. Ultimately, the proportions will write themselves. In God's universe, there is no right or wrong with the journey of gender balancing, just eternal patience compassion, and unconditional love for all of us. When the two twin halves have balanced their Shiva, the masculine and feminine Shakti sides, 
and have reached a strong sense of self and spiritually maturity, they are ready for lasting reunion. Thousands of years ago, the female energy was the dominant form on the planet, just the reverse of what it is today. And men came to fear women because of it. Approximately 2000 years ago, it reversed. And man's innate fear of women caused the female energy to be suppressed. But that is changing dramatically these days. The feminine energy is rising once again and its influence is driving the spiritual transformation of our planet and all its inhabitants. Many souls have incarnated on planet Earth at this time to bear witness to and assist in the changes that are taking place. There is a massive shift in consciousness taking place in our world today. The material ways of life are of less importance to many, while the spiritual becomes more and more vital and fulfilling. As we go through this profound shift, many individuals are experiencing a deep inner change as well. As this change intensifies, each of us must learn to bring into harmony the masculine, feminine energies that make up our nature. But how do we really balance the masculine and feminine energies? Well, men must be less controlling and more alike. Women must be more assertive without sacrificing their warmth and softness. Men must not be afraid to cry and show their feelings. Women need to express themselves more. Men should also rely more on their intuition, while women should develop their logical thinking. Men need to stop doing and striving so much and learn how to be. So put a heart stop time for work, plan a trip, schedule time during your week to chip away at it. Allow yourself to feel the joy of completing a passion project. And women need to become more independent and stop people pleasing and being a doormat. You should be themselves. Women should be themselves. They, uh, they are absolute authentic. Try new things and be unapologetic self. And as always, the key, the key is balance. So what both masculine and feminine can do to balance Shiva and Shakti energies within them? Number one, yoga. Mm -hmm. One of the primary goals of yoga is to bridge the gap between the masculine and feminine. The very act of focusing on one breath at a time is masculine in nature, while holding space for your practice to develop is feminine. Meditation. Meditate to balance your chakras and balance your Shiva and Shakti energies. Feminine energy is located in the sacral or your second chakra and promotes juiciness, emotion-based creation, flow, sensuality, and intimate connection. Masculine energy is anchored at your root, at your base chakra. Our solar plexus, our throat chakras are all masculine. Although each chakra has a yin-yang balance, they are masculine or feminine in their properties. And these points, these chakras, they spin like vortexes, pulling the outer or universal energies to our most inner points in order to align, balance and ease the physical, metaphysical and mental systems in and around the body. I'll also drop a link for meditation that's going to help you balance your chakras. Meditate on your chakras that I would strongly recommend to heal both the aspects of energy. By balancing healing, honoring and integrating your divine feminine and masculine energies, you can create a whole new world for yourself and for others. Laughter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, laughter is the highest form of spirituality, in my opinion. The heart is wide open and the belly is filled with oxygen and it is complete cleanse for the energetic system. Laughter softens us and allows us to be more present and therefore receptive. Let yourself be in a relationship. This is a great way to practice surrender and openness. Many people shut out an opportunity for a relationship, thinking the dominant masculine more important. Connect to your future. Always have something to be excited about. Build in something you can be excited about every week. Discuss it, talk about it. This allows you to feel the feminine nature of big picture thinking. Get into nature. 
Nature is a perfect example of masculine and feminine balance. Just look at a tree. These roots are pretty deep and essential, otherwise the tree will not be able to stand. The leaves, however, are dancing around. They are contained by the branches, which are contained by the roots. All parts are equally necessary. Tune into your emotions. Practice intuitive writing. Both masculine and feminine energies should tune into the emotions, especially the masculine energy. Because the masculine energy doesn't really know how to process emotions most of the time because of its agility and what next. So if you have a tough time being empathetic towards others or expressing your emotions, try journaling how different events from the day or past made you feel. Try journaling all that. Have conversations where you're not giving advice but simply listening. Be open and vulnerable. Sharing a little more than you allow yourself to write and express your love your gratitude to people along with all of the changes we are witnessing witnessing today many are entering a new age of relationship as well be they soulmate or twin flame each partner must try to reach a healthy balance of the male and female energies that are part of one's makeup as we look around the world today that is beginning to happen Many women are developing a greater sense of themselves. On the other hand, men have begun to nurture the tender qualities of their feminine side. The influence of the new Aquarian age will prompt each and every one of us to rebalance the masculine and feminine energies within our nature. And because of it, the quality of our partnerships will increase dramatically. But do not try to just balance your energies just to attract your soulmate or twin soul. Your ultimate goal should be self-awareness. self awareness in realizing that we already are everything we need but the number one obstacle we face which prevents us from knowing this truth is being driven by our human desire to have a partner to fulfill us no I, I, i'm not saying you shouldn't get married you absolutely should if that's what your heart's desire but we need to understand that the essence of partnership beyond self gratification or having sex or making babies Subconsciously we expect that attracting the person of an opposite energy type will give us a feeling of fulfillment but by balancing our ida or a pingala you begin internalizing and embodying every human trait you no longer limit yourself to a gender or societal role if you're not seeking fulfillment outwards you're able to show up in relationship as a happy as a healthy and detached yet loving person When you are self-sufficient, you stop craving relationships to complete you. You're no longer a half, and nothing is missing in you. This is significant aspect of inner union. Can you imagine the divinity that unfolds from such relationships, where there is no insecurity, no neediness, nor attachment? Such relationships can shift the reality for everyone around them, and be of true service to the world. So to activate and balance your Shiva and Shakti energies you must begin with yourself begin by going within evaluate your duality and bridge your gaps to level out the imbalance give yourself time to listen to the voice of your soul this involves quieting the mind and tuning into your own soul essence this is your feminine energy and then use the soul guidance to take action as required ask what is my next step what is my next step and do it that's your masculine energy so by balancing healing honoring and integrating a divine feminine and masculine energies we create a whole new world we create a whole new world for ourselves and others you will be able to attract right partner for yourself attract abundance better jobs better businesses better lives and literally become a powerful manifester So if you're feeling all energized and inspired now to balance your energies then comment in the comment box and empower others empower others to be a beacon of hope to raise their consciousness and be a true service to the world